Twitter's face, so I think it's time. I've only been sitting in front of that poster for 19 out of 25 videos. Obviously, I'm not sitting in front of that poster today. But you know the poster I'm talking about, right? Yeah, the Doctor Who one. It's time for a Doctor Who video. This video is going to come to you in three parts. Today, the first part about the Doctor himself. The second part, hopefully Wednesday, about his companions, and the third part, the Wednesday after, about the villains. Mainly the Daleks, the Cybermen, and the Master, with a couple other ones thrown in for good measure. Now, you've probably heard me mention Bigo before. Bigo is one of my best friends in the whole world, and it's her fault that I'm obsessed with Doctor Who. Well, her and a couple of my other friends. See, there were four of us at our lunch table last year, and the three of them wouldn't shut up about Doctor Who. So I either had to figure out what the heck they were talking about or leave the table. So I figured out what the hell they were talking about. So I sat down in front of the TV one day, happened to catch the second half of Voyage of the Damned, the Christmas special between seasons three and four of New Who. And from that moment on, I was basically hooked, and I've been obsessed ever since. What's that cyberspace? What's New Who, you're asking me? Oh, I guess I should explain. Doctor Who is the longest running sci-fi show in the history of sci-fi shows. It started in 1963 and it ran all the way up until 1989. It gained back enough momentum at the end there so that they made a TV movie in 1996, but it was basically dead until 2005 when Russell T Davies brought it back. So classic Who is Doctors 1 through 8, and that's from 1963 until the movie in 1996, and new Who is Doctors 9 through 11, has been running from 2005 until the present. What's that you're asking me now? What are 1 through 8 and 9 through 11? Oh, well, that leads right into my explanation of who the Doctor is. So here we go. The Doctor, the title character, is an alien. Namely, he's a Time Lord from the planet Gallifrey in the constellation of Kasturbarus. This means that he has a TARDIS. It's a spaceship that can travel through time and space, and for some reason it will always disguise itself as a blue police box from the 1960s because there's a glitch in the chameleon circuit. It looks like this, only without the grass on the bottom. Yeah, I make models. What? It also means that he's got two hearts and has this really cool way of cheating death. He can change every cell in his body and become a new person, have a new face, a new personality, and they call it regeneration. What this means in the real world is that the show can go on even if an actor wants off and a new actor can just come in and play the doctor. Up till now, there have been 11 actors to play the doctor. And just calling them by their numbers makes everything easier on everyone. In this video, I'm going to take you through the 11 faces of the doctor, starting with... Doctor number one, William Hartnell. I've only seen two episodes with William Hartnell in it. I've seen his very first one, and I've seen the first one with the Daleks, who are his arch nemesis alien people, who I'll talk about in the third video. I don't know much about William Hartnell's Doctor. He was grumpy. <laughs> he's a bit crotchety. He walks around with a cane because uh, he's old, um, and he travels with his granddaughter Susan, who is a time lady. Um, and Susan's two school teachers. That's pretty much all I know about the first Doctor. I'm really kind of iffy about him. He's a little grumpy for my taste, but I do plan on seeing more of him eventually. Doctor number two, Patrick Trotton, one of my personal favorites. There's something completely wacky about the second Doctor that I find that it's just hard not to love. He plays the recorder, he wears checkered pants and a black frock coat. And, I mean, he's just completely crazy. I love him. He's the first Doctor who works with UNIT, the Unified Intelligence Tax Task Force, which I'll talk about in the next video. The Mind Robber, that I've watched like five times already. It's quite possibly one of my favorite episodes ever. Basically, two is wacky. Wacky is the word I use to describe two. He's brilliant. Doctor number three, John Pertwee. His catchphrase is reverse the polarity of the neutron flow. For various reasons, he's stranded on Earth, has to do with getting exiled from Gallifrey, his home planet, and he decides to work with UNIT, and he basically hangs out and saves the world over and over and over again. And three is the first Doctor who meets Sarah Jane Smith, and Sarah Jane is the best companion who has ever been on Doctor Who. She is resourceful and brave and she's full of spunk and she's just the best companion ever and I'll go into way more detail about her on Wednesday but just know she's amazing and I love her and three is the first one who meets her. She hangs out with uh, three and four. And speaking of four, Doctor number four is Tom Baker. 
Tom Baker is probably mo the most famous doctor, but I've only seen two episodes with him. I've seen City of Death and then I've seen Logopolis. This is probably some sort of sacrilege to say if you're in the Who universe, but I'm actually not a fan of Tom Baker. He's a bit manic and I'm really not a fan of how he tends to pretend to be a lot stupider than he is to get people to underestimate him, but maybe I just need to see more episodes with him in them. So leave me in the comments episodes that I should watch so that maybe I can stop being a sacrilegious Whovian and actually like Tom Baker. And while I may not be a huge fan of Teeth and Curls himself, I am a huge fan of his scarf. Uh, his 20 foot long scarf is probably the best costume piece worn by any of the doctors. Doctor number five, Peter Davison, possibly my favorite classic Who doctor. He runs around in a cricket sweater and striped pants with a stick of celery pinned to his coat. I mean, what's not to love about him? His very first episode, Castrovalva, is one of my favorite episodes ever, but that might be because the master is in it and the master is my favorite Doctor Who villain. Doctors 6, 7, and 8. I haven't actually seen any episodes with Doctors 6, 7, or 8, so I can't really tell you much about them. Doctor number 6 was played by Colin Baker, uh, 7 was Sylvester McCoy, and 8 was Paul McGann. 6 had his completely outrageous multicolored coat, 7 had this awesome uh, question mark umbrella, and eight wore clothes out of the 19th century. But other than that, I really can't say anything. If you have any suggestions for episodes of those doctors, let me know in the comments. I'd like to see some of their episodes so I can say that I've seen an episode of every doctor. And that's it for Classic Who. Like I keep saying, leave me in the comments uh, suggestions for episodes of Classic Who. There are some missing, um, mostly from the one and two era. Uh, BBC didn't realize that Doctor Who was going to be as big as it was and they taped over some of Patrick Trotton and William Hartnell's episodes. So some of those are completely unavailable, but my goal is to see all of the episodes that still exist. So that's it for Classic Who and it's time to move on to New Who, starting with Doctor number nine. Yeah, nine. Christopher Eccleston. To me, he's kind of a waste of a regeneration and I know that sounds horrible. I am so happy that he signed on with Russell T Davies so that there was a new series at all. I love some of his episodes, but he's not my favorite doctor. Um, he plays the doctor really angrily and uh, it seems like he's constantly annoyed at humanity. Then again, if my only traveling companion were Rose Tyler, I would be really annoyed with humanity too. I will explain in Wednesday's video. So moving right along, doctor number 10, David Tennant, my first doctor. He plays the whole spectrum. He can be completely serious. He was so good at being angry, but at the same time, he has this boundless, like childlike energy and he's just bouncing off the walls all the time. He has this wonderful sense of humor. He has these great lines that he delivers so perfectly well and he's hysterical. But then at other times, he looks every one of his 907 years old. Basically, David Tennant was just amazing. He's the one who really got the new series kind of off the ground. But then Russell T ran out of ideas and he made the doctor go all crazy town. For elaboration, see the episode Waters of Mars. And we get doctor number 11, Matt Smith. Yay! Bow ties are cool. Stephen Moffat takes over as head writer and we get probably the most awesome, most coherent season ever. Season five, the first season with Matt Smith, a story that chases these characters through all 13 episodes until it hits that epic, epic finale in the Big Bang. The Sound of Drums, Last of the Time Lords, which is the finale of season three, David Tennant's second season, is one of my favorite episodes ever, but Big Bang is just totally epic. There is no other word to describe. David's doctor got to be a little bit human, but Matt is completely alien. He's got some of the funniest lines, thank you Stephen Moffat, and some of the best delivery of those lines ever. And his face is so expressive, it's great to just look at the doctor and watch all of his emotions on his face. Also, Rory Williams. See Wednesday's video for elaboration. Oh, there you have it. Doctors 1 through 11. He's the reason that I love this show. Yes, the adventures are wonderful. The villains are amazing. The companions are awesome. But ultimately, 
you watch the show for the doctor. So I'm gonna go be nerdy and watch the Doctor Who. You keep being nerdy too, and I'll see you Wednesday with the video about Doctor Who companions. See you then. Bye!